I forget it. Yeah, whatever. Let's just get to it. <laughs> I hope you are good. I hope you're good. So, um, there's a couple of reasons why I'm coming on tonight. I want, uh, I heard last time in the streams, people were saying they heard a buzzing sound in the stream. So I've been working, believe it or not, for about two days now on all these different configurations, trying to clean up the sound. So if uh, you were in in on previous streams and you heard a bit of a buzzing sound or background noise, please tell me what you think about this sound quality now. Tell me if it's clean or it's about the same. Let me know how it goes, uh, what you think. I'm just trying to clean up the sound quality. So do you, do you hear any background sound now or is it a clean sound? How's the vocal sound to you guys? And uh, let me know. Uh, also, welcome to the stream. If you're new, um, you can ask me any questions now. This is going to be a short stream. I'm not going to do my usual hour. Um, so I don't have a subject at hand. This is more or less me coming on to do Q&A, drinking wine, and checking to see if the sound quality is improved over the last time. So let me know. Please give me a thumbs up if you like to stream. And uh, ask me anything why, because I'm actually de going to de delete this particular stream, I believe. Hmm. All right, chat. Thanks for letting me know. Sound is great. Hello, Nunchuck. Good, 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 good. Sound is clean. All right, good. Sound is clean now. All right, good, good, good. Thanks for letting me know. I'm, um, just so you know, I'm running the sound through some uh, major processing just to clean up the background sound. I've been trying all these different solutions. We'll see what happens. I'm doing software now. What are your thoughts on the U.S. military declassifying video UFOs? That's an interesting question for me. <sighs> yeah, thanks. Yeah, if anybody's, if anybody, before I get into the UFO thing, which I'll get into, that's a good subject. If anybody on the stream now heard buzz in previous streams, let me know if you're one of those persons. And, um, well, I appreciate that, Diego. Let me know if you have a question. I appreciate the uh, super chat, by the way. If, um, yeah, if you're somebody who heard buzzing or noise in previous streams, please let me know if you did and how it compares to this particular audio. I'm running this through some software to clean up the audio, to get rid of the, the room noise, essentially. I think that's what the buzzing was. So let me know what's going on. So so Hologram, did you hear buzzing or background noise in previous streams? Uh, let me know. Uh, I came late and heard it. You came late and heard it. Could you expand on that? What do you mean? You, you heard background noise in previous streams? Say, if, let me know. I know because it's comments, so I have to get explicit answers from you guys say in pre yes previous streams noise this time clean or this time no noise or this time the same i just want to know people who heard the noise last time because not everybody heard it i want to see how they feel about whether they're hearing it this time really you it's clear but you can still hear artifacts mm. Okay, Johnny, yeah, I heard it in the previous stream. Sounds good now, though. Okay, cool. So people are thinking it's getting better. Okay, good. So Diego, thanks for the super chat. Hey, it's me. Since a lot of time as freelancer, re recently got a good job offer. I couldn't resist from the big tech. Just want to say thank you. Eh, hey, no problem. Congratulations getting on the job, dude. Listen, whether you freelance or get a job or big company, small company, Fang, do a startup, these are all good. I know people who've done well in all areas. I know people who've done fantastic freelancing, fantastic working for companies, small, working for companies, big. These are people I, I'm currently in my head right now. Rich, uh, Kaisen, Shifan, Roberto. I know people who've done startups. One of, my, one, of my, one of my students, he's supposed to come on and do an interview. His startup is worth a half a billion dollars now. <laughs> he was actually one of the first students on Studio Web, my platform, so that's cool. Uh, you never heard buzzing. Do you think someone could get a job as a web developer in a month with only beginner knowledge? A month or two is possible. Make sure you have a good resume. You should check in my previous videos on YouTube where I talk about um, 
the seven steps it takes to get your first job. Check out that video. I've had people who've trained under me just in a couple of months get a job, so it is possible. The video is still not 69, slightly too wide. Hmm, that's interesting. Uh, yes, previous stream, I heard it, but now it's better, but I can still hear a little. Really? I can hear a little. Could be a function of the mic, because this mic is kind of scratchy. Uh, I found the mic... I found the mic good since you had it. Bow a note. I can't believe my army confirmed. I can't believe the army confirmed UFLs. Now I'm going to be skeptical about everything. <laughs> wow, that's amazing. Uh, okay. Yeah, the UFO thing is just nuts. Um, it's hard to say what it is, you know. We'll have to see. Always be skeptical, skeptical about everything. But apparently I heard like... Um, some old-time um, people in the U.S. government said that Reagan told them that he knew, like, suggested he knew about the UFOs, R Ronald Reagan. That's a long time ago. Um, and we know that the defense apparatus within the U.S. is kind of its own entity. And I can imagine that presidents not being filled in on the uh, details all the time. Who knows? It's hard to say. It could be just very advanced technology from uh, Russia or China, and they just don't want to know. That's also very possible. Who knows? Because memory is, if you know anything about psychology, memory is very, very strange thing. What people remember, what actually happened could be, you know, you never know. But, you know, it's still amazing. And it's still amazing. Stream, noise, 0 0.02, video quality, 0.98, question... Question quality, 3,000%. <laughs> I appreciate that. That's cool. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, okay, good, good. So, small crew tonight. Small crew tonight. Whenever I put the 169-year-old developer, I know it's the hardcore group. So, thanks for joining. I appreciate it. Uh, little, little grape juice. One bottle a week, max. That's what I typically do. Although the summer is here, I might increase my, my grape juice consumption a little bit. Don't drink grape juice if you uh, can't control yourself. Mm. So let me just go on. Let's see what else we got here. All right. Abu Abu Abdillah. There we go. Hey, Steph, I finished your course on JS. Does that give me the ability to put myself out there to free as a freelance now? Or is there other knowledge I need first? If you did my JS course, I assume you've done my HTML and CSS. You're ready to go, man. Just put up a site and you can find the videos on YouTube where I give you the steps and how to get into freelancing. If you want to really get into freelancing, you should get my freelance course. That's going to help you out in everything. Contract negotiation, you got templates, how to manage projects, et cetera, et cetera. My freelance course is much more than just, you know, billing, billing clients and stuff. Go check it out on the store. It will help you out quite a bit. Congratulations on finishing the uh, JavaScript JavaScript course, by the way. So yeah, uh, hey Stefan, C CS student, wondering if I should take a database course in the summer to, f or focus on learning front end. How about database? How are databases helpful for program? Is that knowledge useful for front end? Thank you, Cesar Herrera. It's a very good question. Yeah. If you want to maximize your opportunities job-wise, then I would learn databases. Just learn relational databases like MySQL or Postscript. I would just choose MySQL, so prominent. And um, the reason I say that is because if you're going to do full stack, uh, you're going to interact with the back end or the server in some way, in any way possible, you have to understand at least the basic principles of database design and so forth. Um, yeah. And there you go. Know what you should do? I f I'm feeling good tonight because I'm drinking uh, grape juice. I have a, 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 a MySQL and a PHP course. Very basic, simple, how to set up a database, basic ideas and concepts. I don't sell it separately because it's a small course. It's in my big package. But just email me, Cesar, and uh, I will... I'll, I'll ship, I think I, I can just set you up just to be able to do that course so you can just sort of get a head start on that. But I would learn databases because if you can learn the back end, you open up many more opportunities. 
All right, we we'll see Cameron says, I'm taking your courses serious and plan to become a developer within two months using Lizard Wizard techniques. Ah, good, good. Lizard Wizard, uh, I assume you took it. Yeah, Lizard Wizard is, now I'm telling all my ment mentees, I'm telling them that they should do Lizard Wizard first. It's just so they learn how to learn, prep themselves psychologically speaking. Lizard Wizard opens up people's perception of reality. It's really big change. It's like, it's like learning about UFOs for the first time. That are, oh my God, these UFOs could be real. Lizard Wizard is as big or bigger when you take that course. It's profound knowledge. So I tell everybody, before you do any of my courses now, I say you should do Lizard Wizard. It's a small course, only a couple hours material, although I pack in a couple hours of people usually take 10 hours to, take, to do. So yeah, learn the Lizard Wizard. Ah, uh, Flutter. Flutter's good. I thank you. I appreciate that. No, no worries, man. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the databases are good to know. Uh, reason I recommend databases is that front end work will depend it on the data from the back end. Yep. So, yes, it's easy, anyways. You can learn it in a week. Exactly, Edward. I agree. So, yeah, yeah. Get that. Yeah. Do the, do the back end. The aliens are going to make us use Ruby. Uh, we'll have to commit to uh, Sukupu if that situation happens. Oh, by the way, I started writing out, um, I don't know when I'm going to release it, I'm going to how I release it. It's going to be fun, though. It's called the uh, 69 Laws of Code. The 69 Laws of Code. And um, I'm going to make a nice production of it. Basically, I'm going to download, it's going to be fun. I mean, it'll be funny, too, but a lot of, serious nerd knowledge in there as well uh what do you think about cryptocurrencies and crypto app development well cryptocurrencies is extremely volatile look what happened with bitcoin recently and all, all you know woo, woo. it's hard to say where it's going to go uh in terms of crypto development it's a niche thing but it's becoming more and more tangible in the real world so it's more and more tangible all right thanks for joining the stream so code long and profit that's the official, I think that's what we're going to stick to. I was going to say it's code long and profitably, but I think code long and profit are, is better, right? Should we go, yeah, give me the give me this symbol, emoji, and tell me if you prefer code long and profit or code long and profitably. I think code long and profit's better, right? So that's the, if, you, if you're if you new to the channel, this is the official, uh, I'm borrowing this from Star Trek, of course. This is the official salute. So code long and profit. Welcome to the stream. And by the way, if you guys are just joining in, uh, this is an impromptu thing. This is wine with the 169 year old developer. It's your chance to ask me any questions you want. It could be outside of code as well. And uh, let me know what the sound quality is like and the video quality, well, especially the sound quality because I did some major work on the sound. I spent like almost two days on it. And I finally got this piece of software and it seems to be working very well. Let me know what the... Uh, if the sound quality is really clean, I'm trying to clean it up like it, you know? All right. Um, hold on, hold on. What types of sites should I put in my portfolio? Sites that you've done for other people. The sites preferably for some small business. I have an exercise tracker and a web app that, can, that you can watch any anime you want. But when I look at the best portfolios, I see mostly business type sites. We can put those up, but what I would do is try to find a couple of little projects you can do for a small business. You got to understand, when they're evaluating you, particular, particular employers, they're not only just looking at your ability to write code, they're looking at your ability to work with other people. That's why I say the soft skills and the interpersonal skills are so important. That's why I put out a course, Lizard Wizard, links below, um, for that particular reason. So, yeah. Uh, Shad. All right, I have finished the first four certificates in your HTML, CSS, JS, and PHP. Now, now, which direction? Well, did you do the Python? Did you do the Python? Uh, another thing you could do is set up your portfolio site. Um, you should check out the uh, the videos. There's videos in the mentoring uh, private club that talks about. Uh, just check the video section. Yeah, that would be do it. Code log and profit. Good evening, Stefan. Good evening, Brent. How are you? Oh, yeah, smash the likes, guys. We're kind of a small audience tonight, tiny audience tonight. So uh, smash the likes. Uh, let your people know about this. 
Hey, Steph, Nerling from Guatemala. Ah, very cool. Any recommendation recommendations for job interviews? Yeah, um, besides the obvious, dress well, etc. Uh, be there about five minutes before the interview. Don't be there late, whatever you do. Don't be there too early, maybe five minutes before. When you go to the interview, I'll tell you what I used to do. Not for interviews, because I haven't worked for anybody since I was a bouncer. But when I would go for jobs in terms of contracting and I was meeting the client or the prospective client for the first time I would make sure I was there a half an hour early and I would park my car outside of their office and and and, and go in five minutes before the meeting or 10 minutes before the meeting why did I do that because just in case I had some problems in transit you know you never know traffic whatever so I wanted to give myself a good half an hour buffer just in case, and it's come in handy a few times. So do that with your interview. Make sure you get there early, but don't show up, don't bother them early. Show up five minutes before, 10 minutes before, whatever they say, but give yourself a little spread so you don't show up late, number one. Number two, uh, make sure you know something about the company you're, you're interviewing for. Try to figure out, find out what stacks they have, what they're using, what they're gonna be needing uh, from you. And make sure you're up to speed with that kind of stuff. All right. So good luck with the interview. Code long and profit, code long and profit, code long and profit. All right. So that seems like uh, so if you vote, but I should do it. I should do a poll. Yeah. Code long and profit. Welcome to the channel. If you're new, my name is Steph. Yes, I am the 169 year old developer. This is going to be a short stream today. Miss questions about miss my question above. Okay. I'll check out John. John Baker. Okay. What types of sites should I put on my portfolio? I have exercise tracker. I did cover that. Uh, I would put out whatever you've done. Make sure they look good. But I would try to get some job that you, you know, do some work for uh, a nonprofit, a small business. You want to show that you can work with outside real clients. What else do we have here? I have the web developer course and the Python course, but not the lizard wizard. All right. Um... Send me an email. I'll give you a nice coupon for Lizard Wizard. Make it really cheap for you. Not very expensive. I got your question. Have you ever been interested in small device programming? Yeah, it back in... Um, I guess it would be 1999, back in 2000. I actually developed a system that was working on Blackberries. And at the time, BlackBerry was brand new, and they were the hot new portable devices before smartphones. And they had something called, I think they called web clippings or web clips. So it was kind of really a super stripped down version of HTML. So I developed an app that uh, used the web clippings, I think it was called. And uh, I would send a text messages over to uh, BlackBerry holders, well, basic HTML, you know, so just drive stuff from the database to them. Now, I also did stuff for cell phones, pre-smartphone cell phones. They had this WAP language, I think it was called now. Basically, it was a, it was a very small, it was like a, it was a, it was a markup language, and you could just populate it like you would populate any, uh, any HTML page with a dynamic language these days. Uh, thanks for the super chat. All right, we're getting our way to, we're building our way to two coffees. Ah, there you go. So small, yeah, but small device programming today, uh, Scotty, is, is is different for sure. Ah, well, asking for lower salary help me get hired or does it have no effect? No, I don't think uh, asking for lower salary, don't ask for lower salary. Just make sure they're much more concerned about the skills. If they reject you, then say, listen, why don't you train, give me a chance, and if they reject you, only after if they reject you. Let's say you do the interview and they go, eh, see, listen, I know maybe you, you feel I need a little more training. Let me prove myself to you. I'll work for the first month half price or free. And, and if it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out, we part ways. And if it works out, then you got yourself a great employee. So that's after if they should ever reject you, okay? Clean, I guess the sound is clean. Everything looks and the sound is good here. Good, good, thanks, appreciate it. Flutter-free freelancing. 
I think it's a little early. Flutter is a good technology. Maybe, but I think people were, any company that into Flutter, they probably got their own in-house developers. The king of freelancing, of course, is PHP and PHP WordPress, uh, those type of things for freelancing. It's the king in terms of availability, right? What do you think about the future of 3D and web browsers? 3JS has some really amazing sites made with it. Pretty much as good as iPad games. Wow. I haven't looked at that. I should check it out. When do you think ISPs will be able to handle it? I don't think 3D in browser is an IP, ISP issue. It's because uh, it's, it's that stuff is rendered on the, on, the, on the client. So it's nothing to do with the server or the ISP. It's everything to do with, um, with browser compatibility. Uh, so this, it's it's interesting product uh, for furniture stores, uh, construction companies. It's niche. It's it might be something you can get into. Uh, I would just make sure that what the browser penetration is in terms of compatibility. I would imagine it's very widespread now, so I think you should be safe. But it's not an ISP issue. I it's a client side rendering. How long it takes to learn really good C sharp? I'm 39, nearly 40. Well, you can get up and running and be able to build stuff within a few months. That's that's for sure. Uh, you're still quite young. Even if it took you two years to get up and running, who cares? Because once you get into the game, things really start to move, right? Hi, Steph. How long will it take to finish your full stack course? Depends on you. Some people finish it within a few months. Some people finish it in two, you know, two months. Some people take six months. But you can get it done um, pretty quickly in uh, two months. All right, Anand. All right, code long and profitably. Okay, so I appreciate that. That's I think I'll do a poll, but I think that is going to be uh, what it's going to be. I think everybody, I like code long and profitably, so that's good. Every channel has got to have an expression, right? That's it, so there we go. Hey, no worries, Shad. No worries. Keep going. Keep going. Doing good work. Just keep working at it. Stream quality has automatically been lowered because internet connection was not fast enough. Oh boy. So you might lose some stream quality. My apologies. I guess the interwebs are being used tonight. Why freelance web dev your preference over a traditional job? It's just a personality thing. It's like, why do you like tall woman or short woman? Why do you like uh, Porsche versus BMW? Why do you like pizza or hamburgers? I Personally, I just, I've never, last time I worked for somebody, I was a bouncer in a nightclub. I did security in a nightclub. And that's the last time I got a check for working for somebody. I was like, this a long time ago. I was 19 years old, I think. And um, it's just who I am. Now, I know other people who have done really well as a web dev, in web dev, as their career working for large corporations and small. They're both good, man. If you structure yourself properly in your life, you can find yourself in a fantastic position financially and having a great life very quickly, whether you do freelance, whether you work for somebody or you do a startup. Although it's it it's it's the easiest is get a job, harder is freelance, hardest is startup. Uh, so but the, the the potential reward is also follows that path as well. So, you know, it depends what you like. But if you want to do work for somebody and get a traditional job, then cool, do it, man. Like I said, I know people have done very well with that. Code long and prosper. How about romantic advice? Anything you'd like to tell young or maybe older nerdlings? Winston. Yeah, well, my lizard wizard will help you a lot with that, by the way. A lot with that. So what I used to tell people, you get what you give. You get what you give. First of all, I'll talk to. I can only. Talk, I'll speak from the perspective of a, of a guy. So I'm a man. Uh, number one, uh, women don't respect wimps. If you kiss butt, they they'll put you in. They call the friend zone. They want they want a guy who's uh, who's got some uh, who can show some uh, authority, and who can show some confidence. That doesn't mean push people around or anything, but it means don't let yourself be pushed around. Number one. Number two. Um, dress well. You got to dress well. Uh, women pay attention to things like uh, personal grooming, uh, the shoes you wear. 
Don't wear dirty shoes or messy shoes, worn out shoes. Wear good shoes. Wear good shirts, good pants. Don't wear frayed things. They pay attention at. They pay attention to you if your hands are groomed. Those sorts of things. And be confident. You should do Lizard Wizard, the Komodo stuff. Links are below. Get you all into that kind of stuff. Uh, yeah, that's my advice right off the top of my head. There are a whole bunch of others. I think I'll do a nerdling dating uh, one. Lizard Wizard dating. I, I covered that actually in Lizard Wizard, but I could go in more depth. Real question is, how are you so still so sexy even after Cody for so long? <laughs> I have it. That's it. See, it's the comment of the night. The comment of the night. <laughs> uh, all right. Another super chat. All right. We're on our way. We're on our way. Almost a full coffee. I appreciate it. Why do I buy Lizard Wizard with a prepaid? Why do I buy pre Lizard Wizard with a prepaid card? Can you? Who do I buy Wizard Wizard? Well, you can do it because you can buy. Um, through credit card, or we accept PayPal as well through our store. If I answer, if I understand your question, yeah, hit the like button if you like the stream. Uh, yeah, it's good for the algorithms. I appreciate. It. Talking about small device program, what's your opinion on IoT, and have you programmed in C, PP, or Go? I have not. I have not. IoT is, uh, is a good niche to get into. Um, I see IoT is. It's it's more of a job oriented type of coding, but it's cool, man. Uh, there's lots of opportunity there for sure. Any type of development is um, is good. Any type of development is good. Code long and prosper. Cool profit. Yeah, excuse me. Uh, the average salary for a web developer is around seventy k in Atlanta, which is about thirty six percent thirty six per hour. If you choose to freelance, could I charge double that hourly rate? Oh yeah, you can make much more than that. When I what I teach in the freelance course is how to make uh, hundreds of dollars the hour. It's there's a technique to it, uh, but and it's totally fine. But yeah, you can actually start billing out hundreds of dollars an hour in time as you become a freelancer. So there's no question about that. Um, yeah. But uh, 70K is not a bad starting salary either with no stress. Why is freelance web dev your preference over traditional job? I think you asked me that, but I'll, I'll answer again. Um, it's, it's just I prefer the freedom and the flexibility. Freelance allows you to work on the type of jobs that you want to work on. Whereas when you work for somebody, you may find yourself coding things at times that you don't want to do. Or you may be lucky and you may find yourself coding on things that you constantly like. I don't know. That said, uh, when you freelance, you, you know, at, this, at the beginning, you're going to have to suck on rocks a little bit, meaning you're going to have to do jobs, might have to do jobs that you not necessarily want to do initially because you've got to establish yourself. But once you're established, you can start picking, choosing the jobs you do. You could start taking on a job and maybe outsource things that you don't want to do to some partner company you work with or maybe an employee or several employees. So you have a lot of opportunity in freelance in terms of flexibility of lifestyle. You can decide, I'm not working Monday. That's it, I don't work. I'm not working Monday. Or maybe you only want to work uh, Monday after uh, in the afternoons until 9. You know what I mean? You have all these flexibilities when you're freelancing, which you don't have working for somebody. But So it depends on how you want to live your life. One of the pieces of advice I give people, something I, I realized a long time ago, when you're thinking about your career, you not just don't think about the type of work you want to do, think about, let me just adjust this, think about, think about how you want to work. Think about how you want to work. Do, when you get up in the morning, what do you want to do? Uh, what time do you want to get up in the morning? That's uh, more important than the language you pick. You know what I mean? I hope that makes sense. Uh, it's flutters the new Ruby on Rails. <laughs> uh, what do you think, which... What do you think? Which is best React framework? But I, I don't, I don't have the, uh, I haven't looked at that, so I don't have an opinion on that. I only answer questions where I know the answer is accurate. Should I put links and demos for the mobile and desktop apps I have developed over the years on my portfolio site? For sure. The more you can show that you've developed real products, real code, um, the more people are going to want to hire you. 
Hi, I need career guide. I started learning Java FX two years ago, and now I'm really good at it. That's good. I have done some freelance projects, assignments mostly, but what should I do to earn more passive income? What I would do is I just start looking at the uh, various job opportunities for freelancers, maybe the freelance sites, maybe local small business, and do a little investigation for a week or so. Figure out where the demand is. And then when you figure out where the demand is, skill up and gear up to meet that demand. You're probably going to find a lot of WordPress. <laughs> a lot of WordPress, a lot of PHP. Freelance all the way. A buddy of mine is using Kajabi, Ruby on Rails. Do you have any advice? He sees it as a perfect project, but I know you seem to be cautious of it. To put it lightly, laugh out loud. Okay. Once in a while, I'll clarify. The Ruby on Rails thing is a joke. And it's not really a criticism of Ruby. It's a criticism of people who say, you should learn this language, or you shouldn't learn this language, or this language is garbage. One of the rules, one of the 69 rules excuse me, not rules, one of the 69 laws of code is that there's such no such thing as a bad language because you can pivot. So the Ruby thing is just a joke. Um, if you see opportunity in it, uh, then do it. Why not, you know? Uh, I've learned some SQL. Is MySQL much different? No, MySQL is a database. It's just a database. And uh, so uh, SQL is a language. MySQL is a uh, RDBMS, Relational Database Management System, which is a fancy nerd way of saying software database. Should I learn coding by building projects first or learn the basics first? Basics first. You got to learn to walk before you run. Learn the basics. Check my links below. Watch my previous videos. If you learn the basics, you'll get there much faster. Projects will become like super easy if you learn the basics first. So learn the basics, whether you do my program or somebody else, do the basics. Trust me, that's a universal principle, by the way. If you're learning how to fight, ask any professional fighter, MMA, boxing, whatever, jiu-jitsu, judo, they'll tell you it's all about the basics. Ask any uh, musician. When I was learning how to drum, uh, I know how to drum a little bit, uh, I talked to some jazz drummers and they told me the most important thing is to keep time. You got to keep time. If you don't keep time, the band sounds terrible. Keeping time means learn the basics. Learn your basic patterns. Programming is the same thing as well. You get really good at the fundamentals of programming. Uh, you're, you will level up as a developer, as a coder, much more quickly. So learn your basics. Uh, all right. What's your opinion on NIM programming language? I never use it, so but I think it's going to be one of the many niche languages that are out there. Niche language means highly specialized, which could mean good jobs, high-paying jobs, but also probably means more often than not, no jobs. So be careful with that. But again, it doesn't really matter because you can just pivot if uh, something happens. Uh, as a computer science student, is it better to complete graduate studies or work for a company? In other, in other way, is master degree in computer science worth it? As a general rule, no. I think if you got your CS degree, I would just get out there and start building real stuff. Because once you have a degree, and you have some, you want projects to show. That's much more important. All right, how are we doing? 83 people. People are slowly coming on board. Uh, quiet night tonight. 45 likes. Pathetic like to stream ratio. You got to raise my likes, guys. Come on. <laughs> um, if you rate, if you give me likes, I'll drink another glass of wine. Mm. Any advice for a student starting his first dev job next week? Congratulations. I am looking forward, but also a bit scared. Don't be scared. Your employer knows that this is your first job. So just go in there and uh, be humble. Try to make yourself useful. Figure out what they need to, what they need you to do. And if you have to do a little extra work at night, don't feel resentment, feel privileged. Because when they're training you, they're helping you. Remember, every single developer learns their craft really at work. That's why in my 
program in my boot camp, if you will, I tell people, you learn the fundamentals, lizard, wizard, then the coding, and the but I want people, my, my goal is to have people up and running as quickly as possible, doing freelance gigs for people, not necessarily become a freelancer, but just to learn how to code in real projects. Trust me, there's, that's how you're going to really learn. So good, congratulations. Don't be nervous. Everybody knows you're new. And uh, just don't, don't sweat it when you run into roadblocks and make mistakes. That's normal. That's normal. That's why there is Windows 10 and iOS 14.1.2.3 or whatever it's at now. Why? They're doing a bug fixes along the way. Uh, so congratulations once again. Congrats. Good stuff. Dress well, smell nice. Best day in your life I've been given. Yeah, be confident too. Don't be afraid of rejection. That's why Lizard Wizard Komodo lesson number one is get rejected. You go ask for 50% off your coffee. You want to practice getting rejected so that it's no big deal. I used to work in the nightclubs, right? I worked in the nightclubs for two years. And I can tell you, without a doubt, the big pickup artist guys who would have all the super beautiful women, um, their technique was they just hit the numbers. I, w I know one guy, his name was Mario. He, was, he used to make me laugh, Italian guy, friend of mine. And he would, there'd be like a, these long bars, right? We, it was a big club, like two and a half thousand people. There'd be like a long bar. And he would just go one after the other. Girl, 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 go. Hey, how are you doing? 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 And we'd just get rejected, 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 rejected. And inevitably, just by the law of numbers, he would, he would pick up. And he would always find them, not always, but a lot of times he'd be with, with very beautiful women. But he would get rejected so often, he didn't care. Just, hey, how are you doing? I could reject it, reject it, reject it, reject it. So, yeah, it was a good skill. <laughs> um, there you go. Uh, hi, I would like to ask Flask or Django for beginners? Thank you. Probably easier to learn Flask to get into it, you know? Can I use a prepaid, oh, there you go. Can I use a prepaid credit card to buy Lizard Wizard? You should be able to. You should be able to. Um, try it through PayPal if that doesn't work. Try it through Stripe. If it doesn't work, give me a call otherwise or contact me if it doesn't work. But you should be able to. Any million dollar app idea. If I had it, I don't know if I'd give it out. Um, that's, it's, it's hard to say. Any tips on getting local clients? Yeah, here's something I, I've, Here's something I, 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 I go to Google Maps and find local businesses, you know, whatever, a coffee shop or whatever it, whatever it is. You know, Google Maps will show you that and check to see what their website looks like. If the website looks not too good, offer to go fix it for free. That's how you and, and you want to get one or two real clients. And then after you've done that, a lot of times if you did like little jobs, little jobs, fix it for free, spend like two, three days on it or whatever. What happens, they might convert to clients that are paid later on. And they probably know friends who have businesses because business people tend to uh, know other business people. So that's what I would do. So start off with Google Maps, find some local businesses and just check, you know, you can check their websites, see if it looks like crap. If it looks like crap, contact them. Say, I'll do it for free. I'm building my portfolio. And you build goodwill. You know, that's how I would do it. Hey, Stefan, what are the differences between uh, differences BW, the complete web developer course, and City Web versus premium mentoring program? Thank you. So the mentoring program is, is my boot camp, essentially. I think I might rename it that so people understand. It's my boot camp. It has everything, all my material, and a whole bunch of other new material, videos, audio, et cetera. Plus, you get access to the private mentoring group where we have biweekly Zoom meetings, you can Q and A, hear what other people are doing. We have all those pre-recorded. We have, excuse me, we have all those archived, uh, going back a year. So a ton of them, lots of great information there. People come in, hey, what do you think of the site? And we help fix people's sites up live, or uh, they're asking career questions, or maybe some of them are freelancing and uh, dealing with this situation. How so? By sitting in on these meetings, you're basically sitting in on people who are at all levels of skill. Some are total beginners. Some are actually actively doing jobs now for people. And they're asking me questions and I'm helping them out with what they're doing. 
besides all the other things, you get all the certifications, you get all the training, you get all the soft skills, the hard skills, the business, the entrepreneur, the money courses, etc. So, and there's going to be more coming out as well. So that's what it is. So the, the mentoring program is my boot camp. So it's, it's really a virtual school where you have access to me. It's also an option to get private consultation with me as well. Uh, this was awesome. All right. Thanks, Ken. I appreciate it. Are you new to the stream? Uh, code long and prosper. Not prosper. Code long and what, did I, what, what is it? Code long and, pr and profit. Yeah, code long and profit. There it is. We're just trying to come up with our, uh, our slogan here. Uh, there are no businesses looking for a website in my area. Should I get into freelance and do some projects for my portfolio or go full in freelance? Thinking about ladder because I am 15. Oh, you're quite young. Um, I would uh, go online, try to online freelance sites, start researching them, become, become knowledgeable of the different freelance sites out there and uh, start working up from there. That's good age, by the way. Good age to start. Good on you, man. React is somehow difficult for me to understand. Do you know your JavaScript DJ? Maybe you just don't understand JavaScript well enough. Uh, and the DOM, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So you might want to get into that a little bit. Outside of HTML, CSS, and JS, and backend language, what skills are needed for Shopify dev? You know, I don't know. Um, you'd have to look at the Shopify API. First, you have to know Shopify fairly well. Um, I believe Shopify has a huge range of uh, third-party uh, app vendors. Maybe you want to become familiar with the Shopify ecosystem such that you understand what's available, what you can leverage in your projects. Hey, how are ya? I recognize this dude, Jens Jensen. Been working in a company for almost two years, and I wanted to get into freelancing for so long, but I find it so difficult, especially in Upwork. Maybe you should get Steph's freelance course. Yeah, try it out. You'll be uh, surprised at how much you learn. It's 20 bucks. It's not too expensive, you know? Uh, how long does it take to break the 2K month in freelance after a year experience doing it in, on the side? Well, that really depends on where you happen to live. It depends on uh, how good you are in terms of your sales skills. It depends on a whole bunch of factors. But you can get there within, like in Canada, you can get there, you can start doing that within six months if it's fa fast, six months. But if you know people, I know people who've gotten there within, you know, a month or two. Depends on you. Is a master's in computer science worth it? Not if you go into debt. Not if you're going to debt. If you're going to debt, no. Uh, even Google said don't go to university for computer science. Even Google saying that now. Thanks for being my guide in the programming world for over a year now. Hey, no worries, Scotty. Scotty, I'm glad I could help. Thanks for letting me know. I'm glad I could help. I recommend Studio Web. I appreciate that. Hey, Brun, how are you, man? Cheers. Code long and profitably. Code long and profit, excuse me. Code long and profit. I got to get that straight. Hey, how are you, man? Hi, Stefan. Just ha I just had a problem with my partner. We are two, and I do most of all the work. How should I deal with this problem without breaking our work environment? Whoa, whoa, whoa. So I guess you have a company or a business. That's difficult. You're going to have to start logging your hours. Um, it's a long story, man. Uh, depends on the situation. I would have to hear more details. You have to breach that. I don't know. Can you afford? Like, I don't know if you own the company or your co-owner or maybe he's just your partner at work. Um, how important is he to the work that you do? Do you have established clients or not that you need to maintain that are profitable? Or are you just getting new clients where you could just leave and give that guy the boot? I don't know what the legal situation is in, uh, with you in that regard. These are all questions I would I would need to know to give you a good answer. Um, this is about interpersonal skills and understanding lizard brain stuff. So I would recommend you get into that a little bit. There must be some truth to the joke. You have some... Lingering hatred for Ruby in there somewhere. <laughs> no, it goes back, actually. If you check out Killer PHP, one of my older sites, in about 2006 or seven, I wrote a, an article attacking Ruby on Rails and uh, 
It caused all kinds of controversy on the web. It caused some big forums of the day to shut down because people were referencing my article and people were going nuts. Uh, so it sort of stems from that. Steph, does your mentorship include review of projects? Yes, it does. I'm finishing up a portfolio project. I want to get some reliable feedback. Yes, the mentorship does include that. If you go for the uh, the full the full package, the full boot camp, uh, where I will do that. That's one of the things I do. People send me projects. I take a look at it. I give you I give you my review. Uh, some people want me to look over the resume. Some people want me to help them out. Uh, you know, making decisions about a project that they may be doing for freelance, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. It's just, uh, with, the, with the mentoring program, besides all the training you get and the support group and et cetera, but you also have my ear. Uh, hey, Stefan, I just had a problem with my partner. Okay, I got that one. Uh, Chu, some of the greatest jiu-jitsu players in the world only do the basics. They just do the basics better than everyone else else that's pretty much it man hey stefan greetings from sunrise hey man i recognize you how are you what is your favorite front end framework last time i checked it was view burnout incoming laugh out loud is compulsory to have a degree before becoming a web developer not even close nope i don't have a degree i learned how to start i started writing web code in 1994 there were no such things of, as degrees in it at the time. And uh, I never got a degree in it, no. Uh, thankfully, in the web development and the development world, for the most part, it's all about skills. As I say, skills kills. That's the key. You want to develop skills. So no, you don't need a degree. I just started learning coding. It started with HTML and CSS. Can you tell me if I'm going the right way and what to do next, please? You're going the great way. Once you know CSS layout and you're comfortable with that, then you want to go into JavaScript. And then from there, you have a lot of choices. I would do back end because it gives you a lot of flexibility. And even if you end up doing front end, like React or something, or Vue, um, knowing the back end is going to be important. Back end means server side JavaScript or server side PHP or C sharp, depending on what you want to go. But good, good start, man. Good start. Cool. Uh, which is the best thing out there for cross-platform development? Web dev. The web. The web technologies. Without a doubt. That's HTML. That's CSS. That's JavaScript. What do you think about YouTuber Joshua Flute, the guy who trashes companies that are, I think he tells a lot of truth. What do you think? I've seen, I haven't seen any of his videos, but I, I've seen him. Like I've seen his thumbnails. I don't know. Um... I don't know. I don't. I, I've never seen his work. Um, I always tend to trust people who have experience over those who don't. That is pretty clear. So I, I, I think he's done some actual web development in the past. So it's hard to say. I don't know. Um, yeah, I'm learning Python three, C plus plus, and C sharp. I'm proud of learning. Good. I've been self-learning since late 2018, but actually I was learning computer programming in high school. Very good, Brandon. Good job. Good job. You got some skills. I would suggest if you want to really up your game, level up quick, try to do some freelance jobs for free just to see if you can take those, those coding skills that you have and put them to real work. See what happens. That's how you're going to really learn. But uh, good job. Keep the good work. Uh, that movement when you ask 50% off on your coffee, I and actually get it. That moment when you ask for 50% off <laughs> your coffee, that's, yeah, that happens. People actually got 50% off. <laughs> uh, I'm a computer science major second year. Very cool, man. You're almost there. You're more than halfway there, right? Congrats. Conf confidence, dress well, good shoes, Boca. Don't forget Boca. <laughs> yes. Boca is very important. Uh, if you don't know what Boca is, you're going to be... This is the best Boca presentation online today. Ready? Isn't that amazing? Look at that. That's the Boca hand. The blurry hand. Now watch what happens. Unbelievable. You have to get at least a $12,000 rig to do that. Boca hand. I got the best Boca game on YouTube, no question. All right. 
Yeah. The girls, they dig. I won't say it. All right. Uh, at 35, I've never had a job coding. I've been coding for 10 years. I can do the work, but I, I'm in doubt of getting a job or starting on my own company. What are your thoughts? Well, you've been coding for 10 years. Have you built something tangible? What I would do is I would, to help with your fears, I would just find a, somebody who needs something like a website or something to build, something simple or maybe uh, PayPal integration or Shopify, and just do it for free. But run it like a real project, but do it for free. Why? Because that will take pressure off of you because you're not going to be nearly as responsible because you're not being paid, right? But that's a good way to get some uh, confidence and to build uh, some real-world experience. I don't know if you have any real-world experience. I'm not sure. And... Uh, that's what that's number one. So you may want to do my freelancing course because it also helps with project management and how to deal with clients. But you might find my lizard wizard course down below to be super helpful for you. Check yeah, that will help you with your confidence in a big way. Uh, folks, listen to Stefan. If you have a CS degree, get a programming job. Most people with a CS will excel in an entry level job since. Uh, since a CS major is so thought it is so tough, it makes the first job easy. Really, not kidding. So there you go. Uh, okay, I got that one. I'm going right away. Do it on next, please. What to do next? Given that I have no CS, you don't need a CS certificate. You just gotta get some real world skills under your belt. <coughs> Non-COVID cough, my apologies. I failed my introduction in computer programming in undergraduate for the first try in C++. Then I took a second time in Python 3, but it was still hard and got an A+. Congratulations, man. Good stuff. See, you don't fail unless you stop. So just keep working at it. Can I make an app with the same features that Uber has with, the, with React Native only? I don't know. I don't know all the features Uber has, but I'm pretty sure you can get pretty far with it. Mm. A tip on getting a job, focus on getting a job, not spend your time doing countless online classes. Yep. Get out there. Yep. But what, by the way, Stefan's advice is awesome, but you need to execute on his advice. Pretty much. You want to get out there. That's why I get people. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Hey, Sam, please tell me something about the future of data science. It's got a bright future. It's got a bright future. There's no question about that. Big data, big data is uh, still uh, a lot of work to be done there, so you're in a good position. Uh, the greatest glory in life is not, it's not even never coding, but rising every time you get a bug. <laughs> How you doing, Maka says? How you doing, Steph? I'm doing pretty good. I'm doing very good. Thanks, man. <laughs> Finally, I catch the 969-year-old dead of life. Welcome to the stream. Cheers. Code long and profit. Um, yeah, if you like the stream, please give me a thumbs up. And uh, yeah, especially give me, you got to give me a thumbs just for this bokeh hat. That bokeh hand, you don't, you're not going to get a bokeh hand as good as this anywhere else. Um, how about, how important is software like QuickBook? QuickBooks is very good. It, uh, it's a good tool, especially if you're building a business. It makes the accounting very simple. Uh, big company too. Thanks for all the knowledge. Hey, no worries. I'm just spreading. What I'm trying to do with my YouTube channel and my mentoring program, which I might call Bootcamp, is just to download my decades of experience. Not just my coding experience, but my psychology experience, my business experience, my job experience. You know, I've hired a lot of people. I've fired a lot of people. Well, less. And uh, so I'm just downloading this into your brain so that you don't have to spend 10, 20 years trying to figure this stuff out. You know, you know I don't know, maybe some of you may be old enough to know. You know, you look back in your life, you go, if only back then I know, if I knew what I know now, I would have done some, something different. It's, you know, it's very common. 
So I'm, I have a lot of that as well, right? Especially when it comes to development and business and so forth. So I'm just trying to, you know, if I could reach back and talk to young 19-year-old nerdling Steph or 20-year-old Steph or 25-year-old Steph, et cetera, and I could share, if I could share my wisdom, uh, it would have been it would have been beneficial. Let me tell you. So I'm I'm just sharing that for you. That's my job here. Do I have to learn graphic design to become a better at front end dev, front end site dev design and appearance? How do I get better at that? Again, Night Coder. Just look at the look up the fundamentals of graphic design. Look at the fundamentals of UI and UX. They're related but different things. Um, so there are basic fundamental rules, well, basic fundamental rules in design that carry over from print into UI, uh, limited use of fonts, color matching, uh, white space, alignment, just off the top of my head. Uh, if you get that, it goes a long way to just making the site look good or the software look good. So there you go. Appreciate the thumbs, guys. Um, how much could I charge per hour freelancing after learning the fundamentals? It depends on your market, right? I don't know where you live. New York City, San Francisco, uh, Paris, um, you know, I don't know, Cape Town. It depends where you are, Hong Kong, you know. So you got to look at the local market. You got to do a little investigation there. But in the first few projects, you're going to work for much less than you will uh, just six months later because you're just learning, right? Uh, I used to, when I used to hire guys, I never took free interns. So I'd hire somebody, I'd start them off at a pretty low wage, whatever it was. We'll say 20 bucks the hour. Um, and I would say, listen, I'm paying you this because you're, you're probably worth half of this. But when you get good, you're going to be much more productive than 20 bucks the hour. When you get good, you're going to be $50 an hour productive and then $100 an hour productive and then eventually to $200 or $300 an hour productive or more. And so when you're first starting out with anything, of course you're going to get paid less because you're not as good. You're not as fast. Your code won't be as good as it will be in a year from now or two years from now. That's okay because you're getting paid to learn. Remember, when you got your first job, your first job is being paid to learn essentially. So that's good. I hope that helps. Uh, is COVID-19 man-made to reduce coders? <laughs> uh, I'm a bit raked to this Ruby roasting session. Oh boy. I got some, I got some Ruby roasting of epic proportions coming out soon. Epic Ruby roasting. Epic. Which obsolete language out of Ruby... And Pascal is more useful today. Also, why is it Pascal? <laughs> good, 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 good. I created a web application. I don't, I don't know if I should sell it or lease it. Hmm. You mean sell the whole web app? I would try to get users to use it. And then if you can, and if more and more users start using it, then when you sell it, you could sell it for a lot more. Uh, Microsoft has their own C Sharp course, so you can teach yourself. Exactly. I emailed Info Studio Web. Hope make sure in the uh, it's clear the notes with the subject that what's it all about. What's up, everyone? Hey, Jay Web, how are you? I think you're on Discord. Oh, by the way, if you look below this YouTube channel, well, I have a Discord channel. We have over a thousand people. It's been about a week and a half, two weeks. So I invite you to join the Discord channel down below. We have different uh, lounges and areas on career and code and lizard wizard and other stuff. We're still building it up, but we have moderators in there and people are, are, are hanging out. It's a good place to hang out, have conversations. I put it up because people were asking for a Discord channel. So I said, okay, I'll put up a Discord. So link is below. Join the Discord. And how is the Discord doing? Let's we'll see what's going on with it now. I've been so busy trying to get the uh where now is it i've been so busy trying to get the uh the sound going on this that uh i haven't been on my discord at least recently let's see what's going on all right it's loading up 
All right, see who's on, see who's on. Give me a second. All right, my apologies. Just hold on, hold on, hold on. Got it. So, are anybody going to join the Discord? Okay, so we just had a couple of people. Well, did they join just now? I think they joined us now. Sorry, guys, I'm going to show you this in two seconds. My apologies, my apologies. Here we go. All right, so uh, Discord. There we go. So we have our Discord channel. You can see we have uh, a bunch of sections here, the lounge, career advice, motivation. Oh, we got a lot of activity. People are on, you know. So it's uh, pretty cool. Coding help, development talk. So I invite you to join. Link is below, Discord channel. People are joining all the time, so it's cool. And uh, yeah, code long and profit. There, there it is. So... Uh, yeah, there you go. Check out the Discord channel. All right, let's see what else we got going on. Uh, how are we doing for it's an hour already? Oof. <laughs> I talk too much. After learning PHP language, which language is best, like Python or Java? Uh, Shiv Kumar depends on what your type of work that you want to do. If you want to do freelance PHP. If you want a more flexible language for small, medium, and large businesses, maybe Python or PHP. If you want to work for large corporations, you want to get into um, Java. But they're all good choices. Hunter says, I was skeptical about Lizard Wizard. After taking I found out that Lizard has been busy. I immediately watched the money management course after. <laughs> Very cool. I'm glad you liked them. I think my Lizard Wizard course is uh, one of the best courses I've ever put out. And I've been putting out courses for a long time. Uh, I hate Java. It looks ugly, spaghetti, cold, syntax. Ugliest computer programming language ever. <laughs> hey, man, I botched up. I botched my boot camp experience. I feel lost knowing I lost 12K. Should I keep going or just quit? Alan. Um... Did you, uh, okay, so I assume you've, you finished the boot camp, but you didn't get anything out of it, and you spent 12K. What I would suggest is that you uh, step back, uh, if revisit your basics, whether on your own or uh, through online resources, or check out my basic courses, my fundamental courses, and then what you got to do is take that leap of faith, put up a demo website, and do one or two free freelance jobs to just hone your skills. Don't give up. Don't give up. Don't give up. You just got to keep going. That's why coding is so valuable because people hit that wall and they give up. You got to just get over that wall. Trust me, once you get over it, it's done. Once you understand it, once it finally clicks and you've finally done that first job and you get the satisfaction of doing that first job, that first project that actually works that people are using, it comes easy after that. So you just got to get past that first thing. So don't quit, man. Don't quit, man. Uh, do, 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 do. If you want to be a lion, you must train with lions. Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. Why float infinite return in inf in Python? I don't know. I have to check that out. Stefan, please tell me. That's just a program hack. Please tell me something about the future. I did that one. Steph, I've Steph been having a hard time getting jobs after graduating two years ago from a coding boot camp. I bought the studio web JavaScript. Any tips to get a job? Thanks. All right, John, um, you want to, there's a video I put out a week or so ago on YouTube, and there's a big seven beside my face in the thumbnail, seven ways to get your first job. Check that out. That's probably going to help you a lot there. Another thing you can do, check out link below, you should get Lizard Wizard. That's going to help you a lot with your psychology. Uh, hold up, what is Lizard Course? Uh, hold up, what is, I put out a course called Lizard Wizard. It has a silly sounding title until you do the course and then you understand why I called it Lizard Wizard. It's a very advanced and very practical course on uh, how your brain works, how everybody's brains work. And then once you understand that, it's going to change your perceptions of reality. 
no exaggeration. And it's going to give you a tool set that will help you in all aspects of your life, will help you learn code much more quickly, help you get a job, help you get a pay, help you in dating life, help you in your health. It's very profound course, very profound stuff. If you don't know, my major in university was psychology, and uh, I'm not a psychologist, by the way, but uh, I kept up to date in certain aspects. And Wizard Wizard is a combination of that, what I learned in martial arts, what I learned in business, what I learned in software. I put it all together into a very profound thing. Uh, I think you'll find it interesting. Everybody does. All right, people are joining the Discord below. Thanks for joining. Uh, it's good to build up that community. Boca plus Studio Web is greater than college degree, without a doubt. Even Boca, just Boca, good Boca. Look at this hand Boca, it's unbelievable. Good Boca is probably better than many college degrees. Look at that, that's crazy, look at that tech. That's AI actually that's doing that. So the AI detects my face, focuses on my face. Machine learning goes, hey, look, it's a hand, it focuses on my hand. Pretty good stuff, right? That's like... Uh, that was this is very recent technology. AI is really good at um, pattern recognition, uh, but still can't drive a car and it will not replace coders for a long, long time. All right, uh, currently almost done with my with a bachelor's in web development. Almost done. Cool, man. Very good, very good. Just put up that demo site. Go watch that video. Very important. Uh, if you're feeling adventurous, you have to buy me two or three coffees, get the Lizard Wizard, I'll help a lot. Uh, but yeah, just watch that video I put out on YouTube, uh, Seven Steps of Getting a uh, Coder's Job. That should help a lot, by the way. Double Guns, <laughs> that's it. Double Guns. Uh, we'll give John, John Dislike gets Double Guns, Double Nerd Guns, for uh, almost completing his course, his bachelor's in web development. Double guns for that. That's worth double guns. By the way, this is the official channel salute. I borrowed this from Star Trek. It's a uh, code long and profit. That's what this means. You say code long and profit. If somebody can do this without hesitation, you know they got nerd skills. If you can do the double guns, you're doubly nerd, uh, nerded or nerdified. There we go. Best programmer of all time. Probably never heard of him. That's the thing about great programmers. They, they probably work in obscurity. A good friend of mine, his name is... Um, <laughs> forget, forget his name. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh, my God. I can picture him. I, I grew up with this guy. Elan. There we go. Jesus. I need more wine. So Elan... He's an amazing programmer. His code is in Microsoft, is in Q Microsoft products, coded for an Apple and many other companies. One of the best software developers ever known. Uh, he, yeah, best programmer. How do you get started as a YouTuber? How did how to get started as a YouTuber? I never wanted to be, I'm not really a YouTuber, although I do YouTube. I never wanted to, I just did YouTube for the hell of it. I was I put up the YouTube. The first videos I put up, I did it for fun. And I had some one of my assistants put up a bunch of the uh, courses from the time. And then uh, many years later, I um, I decided I wanted to get better at the camera work. I wanted to get my bokeh skills up. So I said, I'll do it with YouTube. And then the YouTube channel just built. And I like teaching. And it's a good way to reach out to people. So that's cool. Great bokeh. Very good. I'm 24. I regret not getting into web. I, ah, you're still young, dude. Dude, 24. Listen, uh, just about every billionaire out there, I'm sure if you you, you went up to um, Bill Gates, 67 years old, say, hey, listen, you old nerd, I'll, uh, I'll make you 24, but you have to give up all your money and all your reputation. He would do it in a second. Being young like that is the most valuable asset there is possibly to have. So don't worry, man, you're quite young. Hey, Steph, how are you, Kevin? Jad, I hope everything is well. How would you suggest marketing your first programming book? Blog. Create a blog, start writing, uh, get a reputation, put out, throw out some videos, use social media, give away chapters, give away articles that are part of the book. How important are design skills for web dev? 
Uh, moderate. It depends if you're doing full stack or front end. All right, we got people joining. Uh, I feel like I'm learning a lot, but how to, do I tell if a decent programmer as far as JavaScript is concerned? Um, I'll read, read that again so people could understand me. I feel like I'm learning a lot, but how do I tell if I'm a decent programmer as far as JavaScript is concerned? Whether or not you can uh, write JavaScript to do things, it's just all about practical application. Can you can you walk the DOM with JavaScript? Uh, can you do HTTP? Uh, can you do AJAX? There we go. Can you do AJAX? Uh, are you comfortable um, using outside JavaScript libraries? Whether they, what what they whatever they might be. Uh, hey, Christy, how are you, Christy from Hawaii? Cheers. Uh, hey, Stefan, what do you think of open source contributions and contributors? Why not? It's cool. Some people do it for a passion. It's also a good way to get some skills, make some contacts. So why not? Hey, Stefan, why is float not a number return nan and float infinity return inf in Python? Because that's how they coded Python to do it. Uh, hey, Stefan. Not really a question, but a comment. WordPress and WordPress themes are just a bunch of HTML, CSS, JS, PHP files. It's very interesting to mess around with these files. Yeah, exactly. That's what it is. Uh, thanks. There we go. Should I learn PHP? If you're into freelance, yeah, for sure. All right, I'm going to be wrapping up the stream because I've been on for over an hour. I was supposed to come on for 20 minutes, but it never it never goes that way for me. How to get your first two clients for freelancing. Check out my course. Not my course. But you can check out my course, but I have some videos before I talk about this. Uh, hey, Steph, what is this? Protein Essentials Beef Gelatin Powder. Ah, yes. I had um, ripped up my knee uh, training about two years ago. And uh, for about a year, it was it was terrible. I would pain at night, limping. I would get a locked knee, would stiff, and people were saying I had to get surgery. So my friend of mine tipped me off on this protein powder, so I started taking it. And within about five days, it started getting much, much, much better. So if you have joint problems, knee problems, try out that gelatin powder. Just take a scoop a day. And within a week or two, you start feeling much better. Uh, do you think you could win? Get it? Do you think you could get into a fight with Steven Seagal and win? Well, with, with a guy like Steven Seagal, you just have to uh, keep running back because he'll just very. You're just tired. He's so fat now. He would just get so tired and, and fall down and have a heart attack. Unfortunately for him, so that's how I'd beat up Steven Seagal. I would just taunt him about his uh, his fake hair. And I would just keep running away from him because he's, he, he just, he'll just get exhausted. That's how I beat Seagal. Uh, I just don't like syntax, even though Java is very successful. Okay, yeah. I love how you tell your live streams as a 169-year-old. <laughs> there you go. People in the chat room, listen, Studio Web can take you there if you want a job. I appreciate that. Thanks for letting people know. Uh, as Stefan Mischuk. Lizard Wizard was amazing. No questions wrong. Not one. Cool. Thanks for letting me know. Let me do a little... Uh, let's see what Daniel has to say. Whenever I see the, whenever I see the uh, code long and profit hand, I, I have to go to that comment. Always nice to chill and hear the best tech insights in the form of informal conversation via live stream. Regards, Stefan. Hey, no problem, Daniel. S and glad I could help. I'm glad you're joining the stream. I appreciate it. Let me show you uh, again. Join the Discord. See, so we have a bunch of people joining here. Code long and profit. Uh, so there you go. Yeah, so I welcome. The link is below. We have over a 1,000 people on there already. It's only been a week and a half, two weeks. So that's cool. Uh, ooh, any music you recommend for computer programming? Yeah, I did. Uh, I would say look up uh, Santana. Ah, oh, jeez. My memory is not working tonight. Um, you know what? There's a great one. Um, Miles Davis. 
Ah, um, oh jeez, I gotta look it up. There's a great Miles Davis. Um, hold on, this mouse is giving me trouble. Give me a second here. Excuse me. A great Miles Davis track. Give me a second. Miles. Hold on. I'm just looking it up. My mind is failing me tonight. Miles Davis albums. Top albums. All right, top albums. Let's see if I find the one I want. No, no. Okay. Miles Davis in a silent way. In a silent way. Uh, that is, you can get it on YouTube, actually. You can get it on YouTube. It's called In a Silent Way. It's a uh, it's a great 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 album uh, for coding, no question about it. So I hope that helps you guys there. Hold on, where am I? Is that it? No. There we go. Yeah. So Miles Davis in a silent way. That is a great album. Highly recommend for coding if you like mood music. All right. So we're gonna be finishing off the stream. Again, once again, guys, thanks for joining. I invite you to join CodeFast.io. That's a good channel model. <laughs> That's true. Not bad. Uh, the way Steven Seagal runs is hilarious. Yeah, pretty much. Well, if you want to see a really good uh, action martial art film, go see, watch, if it's not on Netflix or wherever it is, Steven Seagal's very first movie called Above the Law. His very first movie is a, is a really good action movie. It was a low-budget cop movie, but he's doing some really good uh, Aikido there. It's a lot of fun to watch. Kind of Blue is also cool as well. Miles Davis, Kind of Blue. That's a good coding uh, one as well. Um, the one I just mentioned before is, uh, is, is a different type of music. Uh, a silent Way. In a Silent Way, it's called, yeah. Um, I recommend that. So I'm going to put that in the comment here so you have it. So, yeah, Miles uh, Davis, highly recommend. There we go. I'll put it up here. That's it. So go, uh, you can get it on YouTube now, actually. In a silent way. It starts off slow, but it's got some really good stuff in there. It's great for coding. Great for coding. All right. Kind of blue. Yeah, that's uh, Miles Davis as well. I meant I got no questions wrong in Lizard Wizard. Oh, you got no questions? Yeah, well, of course. <laughs> yeah, the Lizard has no questions. Uh, Brandon, what's that? Stefan's teaching is so easy and intuitive to learn, to, to progress computer programming much faster than an undergraduate CS course. I highly recommend taking Stefan's courses. Well, I appreciate that. Thanks for letting people know, Brandon. All right, guys, girls, thanks for joining the stream. Um, um okay hold on taz has a question yeah it was a street it was from um santana man my my brain is on the fritz santana i'll tell you the name of the album santana albums hold on they should come up Caravan Sarai, there it is, Caravan Sarai. That's the album I recommend from Santana. Very good muse, mood music, great coding music. Uh, it's melodic stuff. It's kind of like a silent way. So I'll put it in the comments, Santana, Caravan Sarai, there we go. That's the other recommendation for you guys. Check out, so Kind of Blue, Silent Way, and sent, which is Miles Davis and Caravan Sarai Santana, some of the best music of all time. So I would really check that out. Uh, Seagal is delusional about his fighting skills. Yeah, he is, but you know, his Aikido is good for what it's worth, but yeah, but whatever. Uh, if you have good bokeh, you can even make money as a scratch developer. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Yeah, Miles Davis is great. Miles Davis is great. This is good. All right, guys. Thanks for joining the stream. Welcome. Uh, I invite you to join the Discord below. Uh, lots of fun. I always I do these because I enjoy it, and I appreciate you guys coming on. It's always a lot of fun. 
And uh, I will see you very soon. I got some good content coming out soon. Oh, yeah. Oh, one last question. I keep forgetting. So how many of you have been on previous streams where you heard static or uh, the, the sound wasn't clear, super clear? If you're one of those persons who in previous streams heard some static or some popping or noise or whatever, tell me how that compares to this stream now if you already already if you haven't already answered why i'm asking is because i did i'm doing some processing now and i want to see if you guys can hear the difference if the sound quality is much cleaner for you now so i'll wait i'll wait to hear any comments from you guys in that regard so let me know let me know let me know so that's it so I'm just going to wait uh, about a minute to see if any of you uh, can tell me whether or not the sound is better. I'm just trying to always improve my my game uh, in terms of the live presentations. I heard faint music in your streams. Yeah, I do that on purpose. I put my uh, my old, ch I'll tell you what it is. Uh, let me just re reduce this, my main introduction. This, this is my track. I built this drum. Okay, good, good. Okay, I just hear static YouTube or no YouTube. Really? Oh. <laughs> yeah, I'm just talking about if you heard anything. Um, oh, my battery's about to die on my giant camera. So. Yeah, okay, so I think the sound quality has improved considerably over the previous streams. That's good. Uh, please correct me if I'm wrong. All right, thanks for joining, guys. I'm going to let you go. Uh, it's good. Didn't hear static before. And sound is great. Boca is even better. <laughs> Very good. No static on my TV. Static Wi-Fi over phone sometimes. Not at the moment. Okay, good. All right, good stuff. Thanks for joining the stream. I'll let you go because the camera is a... I'm using uh, the preamps in my Canon C300 cinema camera, but I'm using a Dynamite uh, booster. Um, and then I'm running it through a processor in my computer to clean up the sound. And that's what we're doing, because uh, this is not a sound-treated room. Been listening to you for a while. Sounds great. Good. All right. Appreciate it. Thanks. Have a great evening. See you guys, girls. Code long and profit. We'll see you soon. I'm a sound engineer. Okay, all right, good, good. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just running it through my cinema camera, and then I just put a booster on it. Thanks for joining, and we shall talk soon. Uh, what are we going to do? I'll do the AS ASMR video. <laughs>